Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the graph of y equals k times x. You should recognize that's an example of direct variation, where our exponent for x is 1. So we're going to look at how the graph of that form relates to the slope. Now, you should, re you should recognize the slope. You should recognize a few things first. Looking in this box, you should recognize that slope, we use the letter m to represent slope. When we're looking at a graph, you can find the slope by using, uh, by setting it up as a simple fraction of the rise over the run, meaning the rise is how far up or down the graph goes. And we always look at a graph like we read a book from left to right. So if I look at that graph and it rises up from left to right, it's a positive slope. If it goes down from left to right, it's a negative slope. And so that's the rise. And the run always goes from left to right. Again, that's from geometry. And lastly, you want to make sure you have this formula memorized, which you may already do, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we'll look at an example that uses that in a little bit. Now, in the real world, you don't always hear the word slope. Okay? They won't ask you to find the slope of a population. Uh, they won't ask you uh, to find the slope of a lot of things. But you'll still need to know how to use slope in order to find them. For example, if you're in construction and they're talking about the pitch of a roof, that's referring to the slope of the roof, um, which also applies to stairways. If you ever build a house or do any uh, construction to your home, you have to follow a certain code, and they have a code for uh, stairs and how steep the stairs are. Well, that's also referring to the slope. Um, you also have rate of change. Like if we have a population in one year and another population ten years later, we want to, if you're asked to find the rate of change for the population, they're asking you to find the slope. So you need to be familiar with some different terms here, but the most common one that we're going to be using outside of the word slope is going to be that phrase, rate of change. Let's look at this first example here. Now, if you recognize, it says, determine the slope of the line with the equation d equals 1 t, where t is the independent variable for time in seconds, and d is the dependent variable for, uh, distance uh, in miles. Now, you should recognize that this equation here is an example of direct variation. In this example, uh, they're asking you to find the slope. Well, whenever it's in that form, the slope is going to be whatever your constant of variation is, in this case, one-fifth. Now, you might remember the formula y equals mx plus b. We're going to be talking about that in this chapter and a little later. But for this particular section, we're looking at it in the form y equals mx, which we talked about yesterday as being y equals k times x. So in other words, the k and the m for these specific types where your exponent is 1, where you don't see an exponent, k and x, are your, or your k is the same as your slope. Now if you're asked to explain what this means, remember this is the rise over the run. The rise refers to your dependent variable. In this case, our dependent variable, your y-axis, would be graphed um, as the distance in miles. And your denominator, the run, is representative of your independent variable, which in this case is the time in seconds. So if you're asked to interpret what this slope of one-fifth means, there's a couple ways you could say it. You could say, um, as for every five-second increase, your distance increases by one mile, or for every one-mile increase, uh, your time increases by five seconds. Uh, so that's how you would interpret it. But if we're asked to just find the slope, like in 1B here, obviously it's just going to be five-sevenths. Okay, I forgot to put these in here. We're going to look at a couple of examples dealing with coordinates. So here we're asked to find the slope with these two coordinates. So all you do is you use that formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I'm going to take 12 minus 8 over 3 minus 5. Notice how when I do this, I'm not taking 12 minus 3. I'm taking and subtracting the y's, 12 minus 8. So then I subtract the x's, 3 minus 5. The order for this is slightly important, meaning um, if I pick the 12 first and take 12 minus 8, 
need to make sure that I start with the 3 then from that same coordinate and take, start with the 3 first and take 3 minus 5. What you don't want to do is you don't want to take 12 minus 8 and then take 5 minus 3. You'll end up with the wrong answer. Well, in a second we'll look at what if we switched it around and said 8 minus 12 first? Would it give us the same answer? We'll see. But first, 12 minus 8 is 4, and 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. Now, if I simplify this, we always want to simplify. Um, and 4 divided by negative 2 works out nicely. It's going to give us a slope of negative 2. So the slope would be negative 2. Now, what if I had instead taken 8 minus 12 to begin with? If I did that, I'd have to take and be consistent and take 5 minus 3. Now I might say, well, won't this give us a different answer? Because 8 minus 12 is a negative 4. Yes, that is true, but watch what happens. Our denominator, 5 minus 3, is a positive 2. So when I simplify this, we get negative 2. So the answers work out to be the same. So as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter which uh, y you start out with as your y2 and your y1. Why don't you take a second to try this next one on your own? So pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, what you should have done is you should have taken 11 minus 5 over 7 minus negative 2. Now 11 minus 5, we know that's 6. 7 minus negative 2, remember 7 minus a negative makes that 7 plus, which gives me 9. Always reduce if possible. So this reduces to 2 thirds. And lastly, all this is saying is that uh, what we just mentioned earlier, that when you have something in this form, your slope is the same as k. Don't get too hung up on that because later we'll be moving on to look at the slope form of a line. And we'll be back to using m as your slope. So this section is all review, so this assignment should be pretty easy for you.